All right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is your first time watching Hail and Skull. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. Um, I talk about Norse heathenry related subjects, things pertaining to Germanic paganism, Norse heathenry, um, how to kind of follow a ancient path from years and decades and centuries and millennia gone by in modern times. And uh, this is kind of mostly my approach on things. I don't claim to be, you know, the one ending authority on anything. And um, so whatever you hear from me and see from me on my channel, please take it as my views on things. And uh, I always open and welcome people to discuss down in the comments section what they think about things. So uh, please subscribe to the channel if Norse Heathenry is kind of your thing and you want to see more of my videos and more like my videos here on YouTube. So subscribe, click, uh, click the bell for notifications so that way you are notified every time they upload new content. And feel free to comment down below, share the videos around. The more people that see and interact, uh, the better it is for everybody. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's jump into today's topic of reconnecting with the sacred. I said today's uh, topic of discussion is going to be on reconnecting with our, ourselves with uh, the sacred uh, aspects and sacred elements of this path, this pagan path. Um, this is something that I've been thinking on for uh, a lot recently, actually, for, mostly uh, for about the last few weeks, uh, pretty much ever since I did uh, the last video here um, on hospitality, which you can check up or check out up in the, one of the annotated cards that you'll see pop up. On the screen, um, but the concept or the or the thought of reconnecting with the sacred, why is that something that I was thinking about? And um, I, I think a lot of us in modern times who maybe practice any sort of paganism, um, Germanic paganism or any other kind, um, we're seeking to connect with elements of of the sacred that uh, we can't like physically see or or, or experience in a physical way and, and in modern times we, we look to do things to connect with them and at times there's a disconnect. There's there's things that happen in our lives, there's things that happen in the world around us that cause us to feel that we are no longer connected with our gods uh, and goddesses and no longer connected to uh, the whites or the or the, the Vatir of our home or of the land and and so we, we feel like we've been kind of pulled apart from that sacred element and we try to do things that we look to do things and find ways to reconnect with them. Um, I've experienced this sort of thing, I think a lot of us do. It's probably an unfortunate part of just being a modern heathen. You know, we have a lot of things that go on around us that our ancient ancestors maybe didn't have in the same way, you know, jobs and, um, you know, just, just the, our living arrangements. A lot of us don't have the same connection to uh, the wild or the wilderness or, or living outside of the, of the city uh, and the hustle and the bustle and, and the, the busyness of, of everything in modern life. Um, and those are all things that can cause us to just feel that disconnect, I think. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys today about things that I have found help me reconnect with the sacred and uh, see if it helps you guys if you are in a rut, if you feel that you just aren't connecting anymore with your gods or goddesses. Um, so here are some things that I've found that help me uh, kind of get back in touch uh, with where I want to be uh, with my spirituality. Um, one of the things that has helped me is um, take time for yourself. Um, you have a lot going on in your own lives and in the lives of the people around you. You have your jobs, you have your social life, you have obligations and things around you that you just uh, can cause you to feel like you're getting pulled in a lot of different directions and you may forget about yourself. Um, so take time for yourself, whether that be, um, you know, isolate yourself in a room or in, in, in your sacred space or wherever you feel that you have felt a closeness to uh, the sacred before um, and just tend to yourself, take care of yourself. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the 
connections between your spiritual and mental health and your physical health. Um, but one of the things I think that helps is to take time for yourself. Now, going uh, expanding on that or expounding upon that, um, one of the things that I've always find, found that helps me is uh, to go out into the wilderness, go out into the forest, go out into the woods, go to the beach, go to a park, uh, go somewhere that is outside of or, or, or as far away from the, the civilized order structure of a city or, or, or the life that we live um, with, the, you know, the, the traffic and, and the, the, you know, everything that just makes up modern life. Try to get as far away from that as you can. If it means taking a drive and going out, you know, to the coastline and, and being near the water, or if it means, you know, driving a little bit and getting on a hiking trail and, and walking into the woods or the forest or, you know, however you're able to do so. A lot of us don't have the luxury of the the, the, the pleasure of living uh, in an area that is quite rural. Um, a lot of us live in or around cities and things like that. So if you don't already live in that, you know, rural area where you're kind of away from things, where you're far enough away from modern civilization and the, and the amenities and things that make that up, um, go out into the woods, spend time in nature. Um, because in, I've always felt anyway that when I get closer to nature, when I get back to nature, when I feel the things around me, the, the natural order of the world around me, I feel closer to the sacred elements, I feel closer to the gods, and uh, I'm able to get into just a more cleaner, healthier headspace. Um, and that goes into one other thing um, about your, your health, you know, a clean, a healthy headspace. Um, a lot of that goes back to how healthy you are physically. Take care of your body. Take care of this, you know, meat locker with a skeleton that you that you call your own. Um, eat well. Exercise. You know, um, do the things that you do to take care of your body. That because when you're in a better physical state uh, of existence, your your everything feels better. You have more mental clarity. Your your spirituality is going to benefit. Um, you don't feel as sluggish, you don't feel as lethargic, you don't feel as just ugh, you know, that, that can come with just being in an unhealthy physical state. So take care of yourself in all the ways that you can, physically, mentally, um, which will lead into growth spiritually and feeling closer to the gods that way. Um, another thing that uh, I found that helps me reconnect with the sacred is, you know, whatever texts, whatever sources you have, whether it be the Eddas, whether there are some sagas, the stories of the heroes of myth, um, and, and stories of, of you know, of uh, all the things that, that we have written down, all of our uh, written sources, literary sources, you know, reading about those things, reading those things, re-reading those things can get us back into this frame of mind of thinking on them constantly and, and realizing that this is where we've you know, this is where our ancestors came from. This is the this is the land, and these were the lives that they lived, and and the stories that they were told, and that they told their, you know, uh, the, the, you know, ancestors and descendants, and so on and so forth, told each other. And um, telling those stories brings life to those stories, and brings life to the ancestors who came before us. Uh, and by doing so, reintroduce their presence into our lives in a stronger way. And so I think. Reading the stories, reading the sagas, reading the lore, all that type of thing can uh, definitely help build a stronger sense of being for us as, as, as heathens nowadays, reading the stories from, from uh, all those years ago. Uh, so that is one way uh, that we can uh, help reconnect to the gods, I think, as we read the stories that, was, that, that, that goes into detail about some of them, and we get to thinking about them, and we, we find ways that we can honor them in our day-to-day -day lives as we so choose. And, um, with the people around us and that goes into the, uh, the people around us goes into another big one that I think helps me um, I tend to be very <clears throat> uh, a bit reclusive right um, I, I work I feel more comfortable um, being very solitary being by myself um, I like company and I like having company but usually if uh, at the end of the day my my, my desire is not to go out and socialize, it's to just work inward and stay inward and be, you know, at my home, be with my wife, be just by ourselves, by myself. Um, and, you know, we have to be careful of that. Like, there's nothing wrong with uh, focusing inward, as I mentioned before, focusing on ourselves. Um, 
but the fact that, but, but at the crux of heathenry, at, at how heathenry works the best is, is at the tribal level, and, and you can't have tribe by yourself. Um, even if you're in an area that you feel is devoid of other heathen, uh, uh, you know, societies or, or communities where they're, you may feel like you're the only one. Um, in the Hovamal, you know, or Odin even admi uh, admonishes about, you know, how he was young and he, he was alone and uh, it, it didn't work out so well. And, he, you know, people are the joy of people. Man is the, is the joy of man. And uh, we, we, I see that as, a, as an uh, admonition or as a warning or as an encouragement to, hey, you know what, it's okay to wander, it's okay to be alone at some point, but you're, you're, the strength is in numbers, the strength is in your community, the strength is in your tribe, and how you can develop that, how you can build that, it's going to build on your spirituality and the spirituality of, of those around you. You may feel disconnected from the gods. Get with your tribe if you have one. Get with your kindred, get with the people who you know um, have, are there for you and, and you're there for them. So spend time with your folk, you know. Um, read the stories, read the lore together, do bloat together, work together with one another in the most physical and literal of senses. Um, and that will improve your sense of the community, sense of, of your place in the tribe, your worth in the tribe, their worth in the tribe, everybody working together uh, to build and grow together. and. Uh, as you do that, you're going to then understand what it takes to build on the spirituality of that tribe and connect with the gods even more. So you have one another, you know, you have that uh, exchange of gifts uh, with, with your company to give back to one another. So that is a huge help. Um, and I think that is probably the most important thing that I can think of. Um, there's going to be a lot of folks that watch this video and are going to say, well, you know, look, I'm, I'm by myself. I'm, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, literally, or I'm, I'm in a city or a place or a, or a town or uh, whatever. I'm in an area where there is literally nobody else. I've tried. I've looked. You know, hey, I get that. Everywhere is not the same. There's going to be, sometimes you may have to travel a little bit. Maybe you have to go a little bit out of the way. Maybe it's just not as easy for you to connect with people. Um, as it is for others, and not saying that it's easy for everybody to do it, because if it was easy, we'd probably see a lot more of it. But I get it. There's challenges uh, that make it difficult to connect with more and more people um, of a like mind. But the cool thing is that while it while it lacks some of the nuances that what that make a tribe a tribe, we have social media, we have platforms that people can connect with and talk to people on over greater distances. Um, and in a way, there's a feeling of being a part of something um, when, you, when you're so isolated, when you're so far apart from the world that uh, you can't, it, it's, it's very difficult to have that, you know, like grassroots level um, feeling of tribe. You know, tribe is tribe and there's nothing that can replace that feeling. Um, I'm getting to learn that now as I have, you know, uh, in the, in the infant stages, the infancy of, of building a tribe of, of our own here in Middle Tennessee. And um, I, I realized that, you know, all the online things, all the YouTube videos, all the Facebook, you know, chat groups, uh, you know, pages, whatever, none of that fits into what about, what, what is about being a tribe? What is, you know, what is at the heart uh, of a heathen tribe? Um, it has some elements, like I said, you know, you're talking to people, you're, you're comparing notes, it's like a study type group, but ultimately at the, at the end of the day, you don't have the same thing. So I would definitely encourage everybody, even if it's not the easiest thing to do, even if it makes it a little bit difficult, you may have to travel a little bit out of your way. Don't neglect the importance of that, of that tribal uh, gathering uh, with, with other people, of other like-minded folks. Because again, it goes back to you feel disconnected from the gods, and the gods are on the sacred, and if you're disconnecting, if you're feeling disconnected with them, how disconnected are you with the folks around you, the community around you, and maybe, um, as, as I have found anyway, maybe the greatest way to reconnect with the sacred is to first reconnect with the people who are close to and around you, uh, because as you connect with them, and as you reconnect with them, uh, the spirituality is going to build and grow and you're able to kind of bounce things off one another and, and grow together and therefore by proxy you're going to be reconnecting with those sacred elements so 
Um, there's a lot of different things um, for me, guys. It's uh, you know reading the stories, reading the lore, getting into that mental state of mind of thinking about those things, um, taking time for oneself, uh, spending time in nature. You know, um, even if you live in a high rise in a city and you're you know in an apartment and you really don't have anywhere nearby, um, doing things that get back to nature, whether it be having a small little garden that you can an herb garden or something that you can do with your hands in the earth and just gives you that element of, of getting back to nature, getting back to the way things were for our ancestors. I think that is a great way of uh, you know reconnecting. So there's that and then reconnecting with your folk, reconnecting with the people around you. Um, these are all things that I think are ways of getting back in touch with the gods. Um, because they are, they, like I said, we, you know, they, they're on a different level than we are. We are in the profane and they are in the sacred and we want to connect with them in ways and there, there's times where you're going to be, well, you know, feeling like the, the wires are crossing really good and, and, and the, the energies are flowing together really good and you feel like you're on the same plane. And there's going to be times and maybe extended periods of time where you just feel like things aren't getting through. You're not getting through. Um, Maybe these are some things that you can consider to get back to that feeling. So that's today's video, guys. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it around. And let me know down in the comments um, what you thought and what are some ways that you have found helpful to reconnect with the sacred in your own pagan practices. Like, I always encourage people to share their thoughts down in the comments section. It helps us all. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing and reading the comments. Uh, from everybody down below. Thank you all again so much for, first of all, being patient with me. I know this video is uh, the first of, uh, in like the last couple of weeks that I haven't posted anything, so I'm hoping to get back into a regular weekly, uh, you know, episode being released. So, I appreciate everyone's patience. I appreciate all your support. Hail, and I will see you all in the next video.